A low of 58 degrees tonight. Tomorrow will be mostly sunny, but this weekend we could see some isolated thunderstorms. I'll have those full weather updates for you later on in the 6 o'clock report. WVTT's World News Roundup. A controversial law has just expired in Israel, but it's already managed to split up the government coalition. The situation is also creating common ground between two very different groups, ultra-Orthodox Jews and Israeli Arabs. CNN's Sarah Snyder has more on how Israel is grappling with the very difficult issue of who should serve in its military. Mother Abir Satil cannot stomach the thought of her son serving in the Israeli military. Up till now, he hasn't had to, but that could change. The Satils are Palestinians who hold Israeli citizenship, and as citizens, the law could soon demand that her son serve the state of Israel in civil service or in the military. This would mean that I would have to erase all the principles, values, and thoughts that I have raised my son on. This would suggest that we become part of the occupation, she says. Her worst fear is that her son would have to fight against his own people in the occupied territories, where clashes between Palestinian protesters and Israeli military are commonplace. The Israeli Defense Force says there are over 5,000 Arabs serving. By some accounts, that is 3% of Israel's military. But many of Israel's Arab citizens are absolutely set against mandatory service, saying the state has discriminated against them, taken their land, and is now trying to take their identities too. It's absurd that now they want to take more than what they've already taken. I don't see myself owing the state of Israel anything. On the contrary, I see the state of Israel owing me. This year, Israel's Supreme Court declared unconstitutional a law that exempts ultra-Orthodox Jews from military service. And in so doing, brought on calls by some politicians to get rid of a policy that exempts Arabs as well. The fight by the ultra-Orthodox to avoid the draft and continue to study the Jewish holy book, the Torah, instead has managed to tear apart Israel's coalition government. That is largely because secular Jews have bitterly complained they're shouldering the entire responsibility of the state, while the ultra-Orthodox are allowed to study and live off state subsidies. For the majority of Israelis, when they turn 18, men are required to enlist for three years and women for two. I think what they do is an incredible thing. At the same time, um, I also am in, in the belief that the Torah and the, what the people in yeshivas do is also a super important element to the safety of the country. Many of Israel's Arab citizens have their reasons for not wanting to serve. In Nazareth, they protested through the arts, saying the draft is a tool Israel will use to further erode their identities as Palestinians. It turns out Arabs and ultra-Orthodox Jews, two minority groups who would normally never mix, are both fighting a similar battle to avoid serving the state of Israel's military apparatus, albeit for very different reasons. Sarah Seidner, CNN, Jerusalem. More people have died in a frightening Ebola outbreak in Uganda. Health officials from around the world are rushing to the country to track where the outbreak started and contain it. David McKenzie is at the hospital where some patients are being held. I'm here in Kigadi in the western part of Uganda. This is the ground zero of the Ebola outbreak in Uganda. So far, 16 people have died from the disease, uh, two just today. And certainly the worry is from health officials that it could spread not just beyond this town, but beyond this region. A group from the Center for Disease Control in the United States is coming in to try and secure uh, this area find any suspected cases and isolate them like they are doing in this hospital behind me. More than a dozen are in the hospital at this point. It's too dangerous to go in right now because they are setting up key protective barriers, layers, so that health workers who are trying to stamp out this outbreak uh, are successful and stay safe. Ben McKenzie, Western Uganda. A North Dakota newspaper's decision to publish same-sex wedding announcements has divided people in the city of Fargo. Krista Boehm has details. It's just the new generation. This now. sums up the thoughts for Aaron Hoffliger from Fargo on the forum's decision to change their policy and publish all legal marriage notices. I just hope that more people will agree and be okay with it. 
The controversy was sparked by a same-sex couple who tried publishing their New York wedding announcement in the celebration section, but was denied. With the new forum policy in place, some in the community are voicing their opinions. This makes me so much happier because almost half my friends are actually homosexual here in Fargo, and it just makes me really happy that... Um, I don't know, I just know it makes them happy as well. They should be open to more things and realize that, you know, it's 2012 and there's a lot more openness and open-mindedness about it, that um, it's a good decision on their part. But others are choosing to stand by their religious beliefs. Would, for me, marriage is God's design for man and a woman, and, and you can call whatever you want to a marriage, but marriage was God's creation, His design, and I want to follow His design, and I would hope that the community newspapers would support the creator's design. As far as the forum publishing it, um, you know, obviously that's their decision. I just, I don't agree with it. So I, I, I would have helped upheld their decision not to publish it. Whether you agree or not, it's a decision that the forum says is reasonable for the vast majority of the responses it received from the community. Today is not only Chick-fil-A Appreciation Day, it's also Don Perry Appreciation Day to his family. Don Perry worked at Chick-fil-A for the past 29 years, working his way up to Vice President of Corporate Public Relations. He recently suffered a heart attack and will be raid to less, raid, laid to rest excuse me, today. In an ironic twist, he would have been responsible to handle all the media firestorm that surrounds his beloved company today. His niece spoke out today in this statement. She said, Today, I'm saddened that my uncle is being laid to rest. He was the vice president of public relations for Chick-fil-A. She went on to say that because he was the vice president of public relations, he was responsible for handling all the media relations for the company, meaning that he has the stress of the gay marriage controversy. My family has had to see the blogs, hear the media, read the articles, saying he deserved to die because the company did not support gay marriage but supported the biblical basis for marriage. He didn't make the statement, but was responsible for the reprisals from it. Today is National Support Chick-fil-A Day. Please support the company by buying a sandwich, drink or, drink, or something to honor my uncle. It just happens to be the day of his burial. We do want to give you an update on a story that we reported on yesterday. WVTT would like to mention that power is back on in India after being knocked off the grid for two days. The Olympics heating up for Team USA. Derek Smith has all the details for us in sports coming up after these short messages. Keep it here, Twin Tears.